Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add a really nice auto climb, auto descend feature to your flight controller software. So this is finally another flight controller video. It's been a while and sorry about that, but I've had loads of stuff coming and yeah, I really want to get back to some flight controller stuff. So this video, I'm going to show you how to add an auto climb descend, which you can use with iNav, Vector, RG Pilot, whatever you want. I'm going to be using it with iNav, but the principle is exactly the same. This time we're not doing anything on the firmware, it's all on the transmitter. With this version, it's much simpler to activate. With the last one, we basically had to put it in cruise mode and then we just had access to our pot. This one is much better. The pot, we can leave where it is. So if we have a nice climb or descent, we can just leave it and come back to it. We can automatically start it. Enough blabbing, let's get to the desk and I'll show you how to do it. Right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set this up on OpenTX, which will basically be the same for EdgeTX and also on EFOS. The setup is very similar, so I'm going to just be showing you on both radios. So last time, the climb mode was very sort of specific and only really worked in one way. So we had our flight mode switch to course hold and then our pot here would adjust the angle. And if we wanted to stop the climb, we would need to center the pot here or come out of course hold. With this new setup, we're actually going to be using our tr trim as well as a couple of other options. So we don't ever really need to touch this unless we want to change the angle. So one thing that we're going to have is pushing the trim up will enable the pot. Pulling the trim down will disable the pot. So we can stay in course hold or cruise and just switch the auto climb on and off. We we'll also have it so if it detects that you come out of the flight modes that we're allowed to use this in, it will automatically disable this. But also if we move the pitch, it will also come out of this. So it's a, a nice upgrade to what we already had. Now I've just set up a very basic model at the moment. So if I pop into the model screen, both are basically set up the same. So what I have is my mode set up. Um, so I have switch SA, which is the main, so it's down is manual, middle is the rest of the flight modes, up is return to home. In the middle, on the Horus, it activates this six-way switch. On the X20, it operates these six buttons down here, and they're, they're the main flight modes. But yeah, in the mix, that's all I've added is an input for the modes. Everything else is blank. Right, so most of this is set up using logic, but the first thing that we want to do is disable the trims. So let's pop into the model menu and for OpenTX or EdgeTX, we want the flight mode screen. And what we're gonna do is just edit the main flight mode. With our flight controllers, we don't really need trims. You could set this up so if you're in manual that the trims still work, but just for the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna disable all the trims so they're basically just switches. So to do that, you just click and scroll to the left so that we get this dotted line. And that's it, our trims are disabled. We get no more beeps, they're doing nothing. In EFOS, we wanna do the same thing. So let's go to our model menu. We're gonna to go to trims and this time, to turn them off we're going to go to the step and go to disable now i'm hoping that there's a lot more options for this in future versions of efos i have actually said to the developers that it really needs to be in the flight modes like it is on OpenTX. so hopefully that will come soon but for the time being we're just going to go in and disable all the trims on our trims page so that's it, trims disabled on both systems. Next, what we're gonna do is add something for our pot. So this will give us our climb and descend in line with the elevator. So what we're gonna do is go into the mixer and we're gonna add a new mix, which will be a free mix in this case. And we're gonna stick it just underneath the elevators because we're gonna be affecting the elevator. So let's just give it a name. We'll leave the active condition for the time being. Later on, it will be a logical switch. So all we want to do is set our source, which will be pot two. This is gonna be an additive function still. And what we're gonna do is give it a curve, which will define the maximum pitch up and pitch down that we can use. So 
we can just go into add curve, give this a name. So again, we're gonna choose a custom curve. We'll give this four points, though the detents on these pots are really good. So we don't really need much. Um, and this is gonna be a non easy mode curve. And we'll click this to edit the points. So our first one is going to be our climb rate. So we'll set that to maybe 60%. And then what we want to do is adjust this in. So we'll go to maybe like 5%, which will give us about a 10% dead band in the middle. With this one, again, we'll go to 5%. And now this is our descent rate. So I'm just gonna to go to, I think 40% this time. So that's our curve. We can return back out of there into the mixer. So now we have our curve and you can see when I turn the pot, if I turn it to the right, it's gonna go um, this way, which is our descent. And if we turn to the left, it's gonna be this way, which is our climb. Now, I would prefer this the other way around. So if I hold down on the pot, I can choose negative. So now if I go to the left, it's the climb, or sorry, if I go to the right, it's the climb. And if I go to the left, it's the descent. And I just prefer it that way around. But if you want it the other way around, just don't put the negative on the source here. Right, finally, what we need to do is put this on the same channel as the elevator, which is channel two. So now if we go out to the outputs on our elevator channel, channel two, we can see pitch up, pitch down, adjust up, adjust down. So that's everything set up for the pot. In OpenTX it's very similar. So let's go to our mixer. We'll go to the elevator, long press and insert after. Now what we can do is call this climb descent. That's close enough. Right, for the source, we're gonna choose our pot. Curve, let's see if we can, so we want a custom curve. If we long press, can we get to curves? No. So we'll need to create a curve and again, what well, we can just leave it there for the minute. So let's go into the curves. We use CV1, so let's edit that. We'll call this CDC, climb descent curve. Standard curve, nope, we want a custom curve. And we're gonna set this to four points. And again, we're gonna set the middle two to minus five and five. And we're gonna set our climb to minus 60. And our descent to 40. So we can reverse out of that and go back to our mixer. In our climb descent, we can edit that. And now we can add our curve. So while that's still flashing, I'll show you how to reverse it in OpenTX. So you can see going to the right is positive values, that's a descent. Going to the left is negative values, that's a climb. So if you want it that way around, it's fine. If you want it the other way around, we can actually just reverse the curve. So now going to the right is the negative value for the climb. Going to the left is the positive value for the descent. So now what we should see is pulling back is 100%, which is 100% climb, pushing forward 100% descent, and moving to the right gives us our 60%, and to the left gives us our 40% for the descent. <laughs> right, so there we go. That is our pot set up on OpenTX. What we need to do now is set up some logic. So we'll go over to the logic switches page, and this is where the fun starts. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we're in the right flight modes for being able to operate this. And I would recommend only using flight modes where there is level 
stability and maybe heading stability as well. So I always tend to just use uh, predominantly coarse hold, but it will work also in cruise, but it will be much less reactive. So the first thing that we need to do is work out which flight mode we're in. I find the easiest way to do this or the, the most reliable way to do this in the transmitter is using the channels. So we're gonna use a squiggly line X, which is approximately equals to. For the variable, what we're gonna do is quick click and then long click and that'll bring up a menu. So we're gonna to go to channels and we're gonna choose our mode channel, which for me is channel six. And then what we're gonna do is adjust the value so we find the right mode. So if I put it into course hold, so acro angle course hold. Now what we're gonna do is adjust this value here until we see the switch come on. So it's gonna be around minus 20, I think. There we go, minus, so it first comes on minus 14, it's on for minus 15, minus 16, goes off for minus 17. So we're gonna put it at minus 15, which is right in the middle. So that there is our course hold. Next, we'll do the same thing, but add it for cruise. So I'm just gonna copy this line. So long press, copy, long press, paste. And this time it's probably positive 15 for me, which is my cr uh, cruise mode. So yeah, now we're in cruise. What we now need to do is create an or statement and we're gonna use logic switch one and two. So again, quick click, so it flashes, long quick to get menu and there we go. So now if we're in cruise or course hold, that will be illuminated. So logic switch three is the one we're gonna use for checking which mode we're in. Let's put a space in there just to separate these out a bit. So next up, what we need to do is be able to activate this. So what we want is to use our trim tab. So what we're gonna do is use an and, and we're gonna use trim up, which in OpenTX for some reason doesn't detect it. So long press, trims, and we're gonna use E up, which is elevator up. So if I do that, you can see it's activating now. And we want logic switch number three. So if we're not in cruise or course hold, we can't activate. If we're in cruise or course hold, that will activate. Another way that we might want to actually activate it is by just turning the dial itself. So for that, what we can do is create a new uh, switch and we're gonna use a delta switch, which we'll also be coming across later on. And that is this line, triangle line, greater than with an underscore X. That's our delta switch. And what we're gonna do is click here and choose our pot and we'll set a low value, maybe five. Actually, go, let's go three. So if we move the pot, you can see this blinks. The lower the value, the more sensitive it will be. Actually, one is working quite nicely. I'm gonna leave it as one. Also, it's worth noting that we should also be in those flight modes. So let's add an AND condition here with logic switch free. So now you can see if I come out, that won't activate. If I go back in, that will. So we have two different methods of activating our auto climb descent. So what we need to do is combine these into a simple thing for our main switch. So let's edit this and we're gonna create an or because either of these two things can activate it. And we're just gonna long press, go to logical switches and choose five. And for the second one, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna choose six. So you can see now if I go up or if I turn the pot, number seven is activating. So that's activating this. We also need our methods of deactivating. Now, the first one we're gonna look at is using this. 
And the reason for that is because we've just done a delta and it's using the same thing. So let's create our delta. And this time we're going to select our elevator and let's maybe try to, yeah, that seems fine. So if this moves, then this is a trigger to de deactivate the switch. But we also want to add a couple more things. So this time we're just going to use OR functions to do the addition. So for our first OR, we're going to use logic switch 9. And another way that we want to get out of it is with our downwards trim. So again, we can't automatically select that. So go to trims and we're looking for ED, which is elevator down. Let's go to the next line and we're going to create another OR because we need another method of getting out as well. So this time we're going to choose logic switch 10 because that is our last OR condition. And this time, if we're not in the correct flight modes, we need to cancel. So what we're going to do is choose logic switch free. And when it's blinking, long press and choose invert. So if we come out of one of those flight modes, you can see 11 has lit up. It will exit that mode. So that's all our on and off switches. Now we just need to actually have our latching switch for when we can use this auto climb. So let's put another space in and go for 13. This is going to be a sticky. And to activate it, we want logic switch 7. So again, quick click, then long click, logical switches and 7. And to deactivate, we want logical switch 11. Right, so just as a demonstration, when 13 is active, we can use this. So for it to be active, we need to be in cruise or course hold. So if I'm outside, we can't activate it at all. It's not doing either of the activation methods. So pop it into course hold and you can see clicking the trim up activates it. If I click the trim down, it deactivates it. If I move the pot, it activates it. If I move the elevator, it deactivates it. If I activate it again with the trim and we come out of the modes, it deactivates it. So that is our logic all set up and working. The last thing that we need to do on OpenTX is to put this in the mixer. So let's go a few pages back and we're going to edit our climb descent mix and we're going to choose our switch, which is logical switch 13. So if I just go through a quick demo again, you can see pulling back is full pitch up, pushing forward is full pitch back. So we're already in course hold. So let's just move the pot and you can see the auto climb descent is working. So let's stick it at a 40% climb. All we've done so far is be in the right flight mode and turn the pot. If we don't want to be climbing anymore, we can just trim down and that exits. If we want to climb again, we can trim up and that re-enables it. If we move our elevator, you can see it exits. So we're not auto climbing anymore. Let's go back into an auto climb and let's come out of the flight mode. And again, it's canceled. You can see going back into the flight mode, it doesn't automatically re-enable it. You need to use the trim. So there you go, that's it set up on OpenTX and EdgeTX. Now let's finish it off on EFOS. Right, so again, we need to create our logic. So we can go into logic switches, we'll add a new one. And you can see already the first difference between OpenTX and EdgeTX and EFOS is that we can actually name our logic switches, which makes things easier. So the first thing that we need to do is mode detect. So let's call this And we're already on the approximately equals to, and we're going to choose our channels and we're going to choose our mode channel. So return out of that and we need to set up our percentage. It should be about minus 15 again, but let's check it. So for me, course hold is here. So no, it's not. 
So cruise is minus 15, so course hold must be 15. So let's There we go. So we have course hold. And the other nice thing you can do with ethos is give it a comment. I don't think we need to with this one because the name is quite descriptive. So I'm just gonna clone this. We'll long press to edit. We'll call this cruise. And this time we just need minus 15. We know that's the right value. So you can see it's green when we're in cruise. So again, same as the OpenTX, we need a condition to say that we're in the correct modes. And this is gonna be our OR statement. And we're gonna choose logic switches. And it's already on the first one. So go down, click enter, move over, click enter, logic switches, and this time we're gonna choose cruise. So you can see this is green. All the time we're in course hold or cruise, that will stay lit, so we're in the correct mode. You can see the other nice thing with ethos is we can continue to add ores, which will be useful later on when we had multiple ores in OpenTX. We just need the single ore in ethos. So there we go, we have our modes okay. So the next thing to do is our activating conditions. So the first one is obviously for, for all of them, we need to be in the right flight mode, but the first one we're gonna use our pot here. So let me call this, and again, we're gonna use a delta on this. So the delta is this one here. The, the delta is the triangle. The line either side of it means that it can be plus or minus. It doesn't need to be positive or negative. Uh, next, we choose our source, which will just move the pot. And we'll give this a value of maybe 2%. So you can see whenever we turn it, it's lighting up. That's perfect. I would just wiggle it a little bit in your fingers just to make sure it doesn't give you false activations. So what we need to do is add an active condition. So with this, we're gonna choose our logic switches and we're gonna choose modes okay. So you can see I'm moving this fine because we're in course hold, but if I go to a different mode, it won't actually activate. So let's come out of here. And the next one we want is our trim switch. So I'm just gonna clone this again and long press to edit. And let's rename this uh, E-Trim. And this time we could just use a basic AND switch. The, the only reason I cloned it is because it was easier to redo the name. So let's click for trim up and then return out and our and can be our logic switch uh, modes okay and this time active can just be set to always on so the trim will only still work if we're in the correct modes so that's our activating conditions we have our pot we have our trim now we need the deactivating so let's create a, so this is again gonna be our delta. We're gonna use our elevator analog. And again, let's give it a value. So is two gonna be all right? Not too sensitive, maybe a little bit too sensitive. You can see why in OpenTX I chose higher values to begin with because I did it on this transmitter. The values are much more sensitive on here, but five seems okay. So that was our main thing we needed to actually have logic to detect. The rest of it we can do through ORs again. And again, I'm gonna be lazy and clone it. So quick click, clone, edit. And this will be 
and we'll choose all. So the first one is going to be logic switch. And we want CDAT elevator. So if we move that, our next OR is going to be, let's do our logic switch again. And we're going to choose modes OK. Return out. Now what we're going to do is long press and invert. So if modes are not OK, we exit out. So there you go, that's lit up. And the final one is going to be our down trim. So click in here, do the down trim and return back out. So the exit conditions are we're trimming down, we're no longer in the flight mode, or we move the elevator. So you can see how with EFOS we've condensed this into less lines of code. And also we could add those descriptions. So give me a second. So I've just come across to a, my own personal model that I'm starting to put together for using iNav on this. And just to show you how useful the comments are. So, so this one, you, you can see instantly, this is the switch is in the arming position. I haven't done it for these because they're quite obvious. But now we're on the auto climb. So you can see that this one is modes that auto climb descent can be used with. This is to activate the auto climb descent when you're in an appropriate flight mode and the elevator up trim is clicked. Uh, activate the auto float mode when the pot is moved. Activate the auto climb descent when uh, any of the activation requirements are met. So this is the main switch it on all conditions. Uh, this is the deactivate auto float mode if the elevator is moved. Uh, conditions to deactivate the auto climb. So this is the OR system again. And that's the final sticky. So you can see how useful those comments are. But let's get back to our tutorial. So you can see I did add a comment just for this last one, but then I decided to show you my model because they're all laid out with comments. It just makes things so much easier. But what we need to do finally is add our sticky in to actually latch the climb descent mode on or off. So let's call this. So this is gonna be a sticky. And we're gonna use our activating condition, which we're going to choose our logic switch and we're going to use, oh, I forgot the all. Okay, sorry about that guys. So I'll leave that there for the minute, but let's go and add in our activation one. So, so this is going to be our all condition. And our first logic switch will be C act pop and our second logic switch will be C act trim. So now we have our activation switch which was missing so we can activate the trim or the pop. So this is another nice feature because this is out of position we can do a short click and we can choose move and let's put that below the other C acts. So let's check we've got the deactivate and we've got deactivate, that's cool. All right, so let's go back in and edit CD active. So long press to edit. So our on condition, we now can set this to C act activate and our trigger off condition, we want our logic switch and C deactivate. So there we go, if we do trim up, we're active, trim down, we're de deactivated, move the pot, we're active, move the elevator, we're deactive, trim to activate, mode to deactivate, we can't use the trim to activate, or the pot here. So that's all working correctly. So final thing that we need to do is add this to our mixer. So we'll exit out of the logic switches, go back to our mixer. We go to our climb descent and long press to edit. And we just need to change this active condition here to logic switch. And it's going to be the bottom one, which is CD active. So you can see at the moment it's doing nothing. 
it would be easier actually to show you this on the outputs page. So let's pop into there. You can see our elevator full back. We have a hundred percent pitch full forward. We have a hundred percent pitch down. We're currently actually in course hold, so this should work. So let's move the pot and you can see we are adding pitch. So let's go to about a 40% pitch up. So we've activated, whoop, I just knocked the elevator, which has deactivated it. Uh, so let's activate it back on here. You can see the elevator deactivates it. We can activate it and deactivate it with the trim switch. We can activate it with the trim and deactivate it by changing modes. We can't activate it at all while we're not in the correct flight mode. But once we're in, we can activate it. There we go, that's it all set up. So there you go guys, that's how you can set up this really neat but also quite simple automatic climb and descent function. It comes in really handy if you're doing long climbs or long descents, you can just set the angle that you want and just hands off, enjoy the view. I hope you guys found this useful and interesting, if you did please give it a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon, that will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. Thank you very much for my supporters, patrons and people who leave super thanks, it's all greatly appreciated and really does help the channel. Thank you very much for watching guys, fly models like you stole them, have fun and I'll see you on the next one.